All right, welcome back to the tutorial. We continue. <laughs> um, I took a, a few listens to the progress we've made so far. Uh, one thing I noticed, I think the chord progression was a little bit too fast. Um, I'm going to slow it down a little bit, but it's going to take a little bit of manual work. Um, basically, go ahead and duplicate your scene with the eight bars and make a 16 bar loop. You're going to grab these notes here in the bass, and we're actually going to clobber those that were in the 16 bar loop. And we can duplicate these out to eight bars like that. Alrighty. Let's extend this a little bit. Here we go. So we'll take these two bars here and uh, the bars three through five here. They actually go up to um, they go up to C sharp. Take those up. Five through seven are going to go to B. And then seven through nine go up to A. That's way too high. <laughs> here we go. That A. Okay. So we're going to make sure that everything's on the scale here. Um, this G is actually not right, so we'll drop that down one. Uh, the C is not right either. Drop it down to B. A should be correct. So uh, we have another G here. Let's take that down to F sharp. And let's see here. One, two. To, this is not right. Let's drop that down one. Um, A is on. B is on. So those are fine. Uh, one, two, 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 one. So E is actually in. C sharp, B. Those are all fine. And uh, two, it's fine. Two, one. You should all be fine too. Okay. That's the first eight bars. We're actually going to duplicate this out again. Now, the only difference here is in that last uh, 15 through 17 area. Uh, these notes actually go down to D sharp. And let's make sure again that these notes are in our scale. One, two, two. That one's not right. We're actually going to push that one up one. And... Uh, Let's see here, two, uh, I believe F is not correct. Let's see here, one, two, 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 one. Yeah, let's actually push that one up. Okay. Okay, so how does that sound? Stop all this. Okay, now the only difference in the sub bass is that last, the last two bars, remember we were talking about counterpoint earlier? These actually go up one octave for the sub bass. Fortunately, the pads are going to be a lot easier. Just hit the times two. And that did not work. <laughs> Select all first, times two. And extend this out here. Box pads will use the same thing, so just grab it. ARP, select all times two. Why is that not being cooperative? All right, for the lead, uh, if you set your grid here to one bar, this actually makes it a lot easier. You select a bar, you hit uh, go to edit, and you can do duplicate time. Or you can hit control shift D, which is uh, a little bit easier. And we're just going to duplicate those 
those bars and that one and one more we'll include these new uh, MIDI samples in the zip file so you don't have to do all of this if you don't want to which I could understand that all right so there's one more thing that was uh, kind of irking me here uh, <clears throat> the lead sound sounds a little bit uh, whippy to me and I believe it's a problem with the chorus uh, I was actually fooling around with the chorus some and change the settings here a little bit it sounds a lot better some about like that I think I also rolled off too, too much on the bass part so In my mind, that sounds much better than it did before. So just a few little things to fix up, and uh, hopefully that will uh, get you rolling there. All right, so uh, we will go ahead and add a new drum loop. We can get rid of this MIDI clip here. That's not necessary. And uh, we're going to add a new sample. If I can find my samples again. <clears throat> so hopefully you've got some drum loops. Uh, if you don't, then uh, you don't necessarily need to have this. It's just kind of a uh, an, a cool addition. <laughs> I'm going to grab this uh, VEC Loops uh, 50 and pop that in here. Call this Drum Loop. And color that red. And put it over here with the drums. Uh, okay, so... If we just play this alongside everything. It's not bad, but it's not great. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to EQ this up. Um, we, we definitely don't want the bass on this. To, it will clash with the kick drum too much. So let's grab a uh, EQ8. There's really not a lot of bass, but we'll go ahead and just cut that off. Times two version. I think we want to actually enhance this a bit here. You can also play around here. The uh, transients are maybe a little bit too long. If you go over here to say, um, you put it on beats here and then transients, you actually adjust this. Um, length indicator and kind of reduce the the time of those hits so here we go it's not working <laughs> you have to hit this one first so if your if your drum loops are just too taking up too much space in the mix drop that down and you can kind of shorten those hits some which is what we want to do Um, we're also going to add a compressor here just to kind of uh, do a little bit more presence in the mix. That's way too loud right now. Okay, we're also going to do something really cool here. Use the beat repeat. And uh, I'm going to use the preset here called Brain Dance. Um, see how that sounds. So you're kind of a uh, farting noise, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. Um, I think there's a volume. Let's see. There we go. It's almost adding a little bit too much on the bass. What I'm going to go ahead and do is is put the EQ behind the. Uh, Repeat, repeat. There we go. And I almost feel like it's too fast. Let me try messing around with the uh, warp settings here. Well, that's. Well, I think it's kind of, kind of cool the way it is. All 
right, so uh, let's do. Um, what I'm going to do is actually resample this in, um, and actually, this is very easy to do. Um, let's see here. I can delete this old clip here. If you if you go to the drum loop and uh, drop it in here. And I have to hit this here. If I go over here and say freeze track, I can insert another audio track here and actually just drop this down. And uh, now this audio track has that audio in it. We can actually go here over here and unfreeze this track and then just turn these off and bring this up here. All right, so let's see how uh, let's let's pull this back over here, and just delete the original clip. Rename this to I don't know, funky. <laughs> so let's try this out here. Too much going on at once. Oh, got to set to loop. And one thing is, it, it almost seems like it's it's on too much. I'm going to try messing around with the volume on it some. Um, if we go to clip volume. And I'm trying to see where this might, we might want to notch this out here. No, I kind of like this part of it. Maybe I'll take this part out as well. Now I said uh, <laughs> I wanted to enhance the uppers before. I think maybe it's a little bit too much. Let's actually grab a fifth node here and just maybe cut off the highest frequencies. Okay, so there's something funky going on here. Let's, uh, I think the volume is cutting out too sharply, so if you grab these and pull them in a little bit. Oh boy, sometimes uh, Ableton is a little squirrely with these envelopes. All right. We're actually gonna go ahead and add a little bit of reverb on these. And really, we don't, you don't need a lot of it to have a good effect. I noticed, too, that it's not quite hitting where my fader is, so I'm going to bring the volume up just a little bit. All right, that sounded pretty good. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead and call that good. Uh, make sure to save your work. And uh, again, that just adds a little bit of extra oomph to your uh, your track. Gives you a little bit more, uh, fills kind of the holes in your drums. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, call that good for that lesson. So again, save your work.